In this video, I will go over the third encounter of the Vow Disciple Raid, the Exhibition Encounter, or as I like to call it, the Relic Encounter. This is a fairly fun encounter, and once you understand to do the reps, this is actually a pretty easy encounter. However, as you're first going through this, this will be one of the most challenging in the fact that you're juggling a lot of relics, a lot of roles, and everyone has to play a role in the game. You can't just sit back and just do ad clear. So it's very important to do this as many times as possible, and I will try to give you some tips and tricks so your runs become easy as possible. So first I'm gonna go over some common roles and items that you can use with this encounter. First, there are three potential relics you'll need at different parts of the encounter. There is a pyramid-shaped crux, which shoots out a laser beam. This is similar to kind of the nuts that you used within the Leviathan Raid, if you're familiar with that. These are the only relics that can take down certain taken enemies' shields. You must have these if you want to progress the encounter. The other thing that this does is that when you kill an enemy with this, it extends your timer. I think it's around 50 seconds. And this is key because these encounters are timed, and if your timer runs out, the entire fire team wipe. The next relic is the Aegis from the Vault of Glass Raid. If you're not familiar with this, this is the relic that you actually use. In the Vault of Glass, you do more things, but you use that basically to take debuffs off to cleanse your fire team. In this case, you have a Pervading Darkness debuff that will stay on your fire team, and if it gets to 10, it'll wipe them out. So that person, their primary job is to go and cleanse the fire team and make sure they get that buff off with this that means that person got to be extremely mobile because as we get further into the encounter you're going to have to go right and left to do that debuff so keep that in mind if you haven't used it before if you're not comfortable using the counter hey go in vault of glass you can try it out and see what it feels like the final relic is something that not everyone will be familiar with if they haven't really done the last wish raid but it's the riven eye from the last wish raid the primary role you use this for in this encounter is you can use your grenade attack to actually get rid of taken blights. Those blights will shield enemies. You're the only person that can take that shield off because that shield will actually prevent you from killing key enemies you need, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, that to progress the encounter. The other thing that's nice about all of these relics is that all of them have infinite ammo. So while you have these, you're gonna wanna make sure you're using them for ad clear. Don't waste having a relic. Each of the relics, when you finish a room, are gonna to have to be deposited before you can start the next room. The key thing is when you do this, the person who deposited can't pick it back up. It has a 30 second debuff before you can do that. Now, if you have a lot of time on your, your, ca your counter from the previous encounter, you potentially could have the same person pick it up. But for the most part, you're going to have to have people exchange them and, pick, and someone else pick them back up. So it's important that every person who's in this raid and this encounter understands how to use a particular relic because at some point, because of the number of the people and the number of the rooms, you will have to pick up a relic and you will have to use it. So don't stay away from it. Sometimes people in, in raids just want to add clear things like that. Go ahead and le learn at least one of the roles so you feel comfortable with it so you can help your fire team. It's also very important for your relic not to die. If you do die, you will drop the relic right next to you for uh, just a small period of time. Now, the tricky thing is, is when people try to go pick up the relic, they're also going to potentially revive you, right? So it's it's always tricky doing that, right? Because basically you'll have the two actions on the same spot. If for some reason it times out, you're actually going to have to go all the way back to the room where we deposited it, and you're going to have to pick the relic back up, which will take time away from the fire team. So one thing is some of the relics will uh, put you in a position where you're going to be vulnerable, especially the Taken Blight because the Taken Blight, you're the only one that can take it out and there's usually enemies around there and your fire team can't help you with it. That's one thing to keep in mind as you're progressing through the encounter. Now let's talk about roles. So obviously you understand the three relics, right? And, and what, they're, what they're functioning and what they do. So obviously you're going to have to, throughout the encounter, exchange those. So it's probably good for you to be comfortable with all three roles. Obviously, like I said before, one of the roles is taking the shield down from specific Taken. One of them is taking the Blight down, which is shielding things you need to kill to be able to progress the encounter. And then the other one is just to cleanse your fire team. Now, I will say the one that's cleansing your fire team and the one that's um, taking the Blight down, they're going to have to rotate and jump between different portions of the encounter. So if you want to have the one that's probably the easiest to use, it's probably the first one, the Pyramid Crux. That's probably the easiest one to use with 
basically the things that you have to kill always spawn in the same area and you can also use it for great ad clip. Then obviously those are the three primary roles. Besides that, you're gonna want everyone else to focus on ad clear to be able to clear ads and protect the fire team as much as possible because there are a ton of ads in this encounter. Now it's not a contest mode, it should be easier, but just keep that in mind. Along with that, now that we're talking about, you know, the relics and the rolls, I also wanna talk about weapon recommendations. So anything that's good at ad clear is gonna be really good. Anything that's a burst weapon because you're gonna have, and we'll talk about it here in a second, glyph keepers you have to take down, they're a little bit beefier. Those also, you're probably going to want to have something that you can burst DPS. So. Options obviously are Wither Horde does a great job at clearing ads that will take an exotic so you won't be able to do other things. Uh, the Funnel Web, the new SMG with whatever role you have, though, that's really good. You can combine that with Void Builds to be able to really empower you through the encounter. I personally used Ascendancy, um, a rocket launcher that's solar because there's a lot of solar shielded enemies. I use that. The only thing you have to be careful about is that you can't blow yourself up depending on where you're at. Plus, with one of the relics actually blocks your rocket launcher and can blow you up. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But anything that helps you to clear a lot of ads as quickly as possible, whatever you're comfortable with, and something that will allow you to burst DPS to take a tanky object down. But there are no DPS targets in this encounter, so you don't really need DPS weapons. From a super perspective, roaming supers work well. Keep in mind, there's a lot of places to fall, so keep that in mind. I used a tether in this encounter because I was running a hunter. I used deadfall, which helped me out because I could get my super back quickly. I control a lot of ads. But again, use your personal play style. Anything, again, allows you to kill a lot of enemies, a lot of smaller enemies, and potentially could do burst DPS would be good. But with no boss, you don't have to worry about something that does a lot of DPS. Now let's talk about glyph keepers and symbols. So what you're gonna see within this encounter is that you're gonna have a common theme of things on the right and things on the left. Throughout this encounter, you're gonna have glyph keepers that show up. And there's gonna be, depending on which room, multiple waves of them. There's gonna be a scorn glyph keeper and there's gonna be a taken glyph keeper. The scorn glyph keeper, the people without relics, can read the symbols. There'll be three symbols that show up above him when you kill him. The Taken Glyph Keeper can only be shown by someone, someone with a relic, but that's any relic. So as you get further along, you'll have more relics. You'll have more people who can read that. What you're gonna wanna look for is between the Scorn and Taken, again, right and left, Glyph Keepers and the symbols they show up, you're gonna wanna look for the one that's common. And again, as you progress through the rooms, you're gonna need to do that more often. But look for the one that's common. So for instance, if you have three symbols on left, three symbols on right, read them out, whichever one's common between them, that's the thing on the door that you need to shoot to get through to the next portion of the encounter. So now with that, you kind of understand the common terms, how everything works. Then let's talk about how you progress. So room one is fairly simple. Room one, you're going to have a taken shielded guy in the middle, take him out, right? Because he extends your timer. Take the glyph keepers on the right and left, read the one symbol that's common, shoot it, get through the door. Again, really, really simple, but introduces you to the mechanics. Room two extends it a little bit. So you're basically gonna have people going right and left. What I would do is I would divide your team up that way. And one thing to keep a note as you're doing this encounter is that you can potentially go ahead and say, hey, I'd like everyone in each room to do specific roles, like plan it out. And you can particularly say who's gonna stay right and left. For the relic people, you're gonna to have to rotate anyway. You're gonna to have to move around, especially if you have either the, the thing that takes out the blights, or if you have the relic that gets your takes your debuff off. But again, play it according to your play style. If your team's pretty strong, they know each other, you don't have to worry about that. But for LFG groups, that's something you wanna keep in mind. So for room two, again, you go right and left. Again, we, we split up our fire teams. You take out a bunch of ads. You have to take the ads out quickly because taking the ads out quickly is what allows the glyph keeper to show up. You're gonna have the glyph keeper show up on the right and show up on the left. Take those down as quickly as possible. At that point, have a person on the right and left read out what the glyphs are and you'll figure out the common one. In the center of the room where the door is, you're going to have one of those shielded taken guys show up. Have the person who has the crux relic just go in and shoot him to extend your time. Because again, you have a minute 15 with when you start each of these encounters. And extending that's going to be important as this these encounters progress. So do that. And then a second set of glyph keepers is going to show up on each side. Take those down. That'll tell you what the second thing that you need to read. Put those in and you can progress through the door. One of the things to keep in mind in this particular room is that this will be the first time you have the Aegis and you have to take the debuff that will that will take you and, and take your fire team 
blind them and then kill them. That person's gonna have to constantly go between the right and left to make sure they're taking that debuff. Now, since it's a small room, you don't have to do it that aggressively, but later on it's gonna be really important. So now you're getting ready to go into room three. Go into Anna Chamber. Be careful, there's screams on the ground, so if you're not careful, you can actually die here really quickly. When you get ready to put your relics in their containers so you can exchange to get what will be now three relics, it is probably important to coordinate that because the minute someone picks up the first relic, your timer starts for the encounter. So if your team's really good, you're fine. If you're not, I would just go ahead and get close to there, have the people who are gonna pick it up, because again, the same person can't pick it up. You're gonna have to exchange people who are picking it up at this point. Just go ahead and get that set, pick up the relics that you need, and then go into the next room. So again, as you get into room three, you're gonna split up left and right to kind of go in and make sure you have enough people who can actually help you out and clear out ads in the encounter. Obviously, you'll have the Aegis guy who will run back and forth. You'll have the Crux guy who will kill the one taken. And in this case, you'll also have Blights very important because without taking the Blights out, you can't kill some of the adds and some of the Glyph Keepers. So it's really, really important to do that. For this room specifically, you'll notice in the middle, there'll be a series of columns between the right side and the left side with a lot of holes and depth underneath that. So that is where it's the easiest place to make sure you can get across, again, for the Blight guy and for the Aegis guy to make sure they're going back and forth to take the debuff off and actually deal with the Blights. And again, if you're not comfortable jumping, I would definitely recommend, like if you're on a Hunter using your Stompies, you can do it without it, and doing whatever jumps you feel comfortable going over long distance on your Titan and your Warlock. So again, similar concepts. You're going to go in, you're going to go between the two different areas, right and left, you're going to read Glyph Keepers, and then you're going to figure out what the common glyphs are so that you can open up the door to finish the encounter. There are, like I said, with the blights, blights are probably the biggest thing that's important in this room because as you're progressing, it's really important to get this out quickly because you have the initial minute 15 timer, but then you also only get one extension by killing out the taken guy with the shields. So you really only have a little over two minutes to finish this particular room. So it's really important for your team to progress through this. Now, when you're first doing this, this is where a lot of teams got stuck initially. And I would say the biggest thing is do reps so your team understands, especially the guy with the blight. It's very important for him to understand that, to understand where the spawn point locations are so you can do things very quickly. Now for room four, room four is a completely like wide open area. As you enter the antechamber for room four, obviously you're gonna have the same thing. You have screams on the ground, you're gonna have to exchange your relics. So again, just coordinate that accordingly. What I would recommend instead of splitting up into groups of two in this case, because there's a ton of ads and there's a ton of distance between the different areas, I would recommend in this case, just having your entire fire team come along with you because outside in the third room, you, it was more difficult to have a large group because you just had those pillars you were going on. In this room, the areas jumping across are these big wide areas. So I personally, and this is how we got through it, I would recommend having your entire fire team go right to left constantly. So basically go whichever way you see the first blight, if that's left, go left, take the blight out, kill all the ads, get the glyph that you're going to have to read, and just do that like that because to me, that was the quickest way for our fire team. That was the most successful we are. One thing to keep in mind is if you're standing in the middle too long, there are a ton of ads at the end. They will take you down. There's snipers and things like that. Keep that in mind. So just do whatever you want to build wise for protection, especially for the people who are going to have the relics because you don't want them to die. And then at the end, after you're doing right and left, there's a big there's a big platform in the middle. Make sure you take out as many of those enemies as possible. Try to protect the blight keeper because again, the person who's taking the blights out is going to be very vulnerable when they do that. You finish that fourth room and you finish the encounter. So this encounter to me is, is actually when we get good at it and we understand where all the spawn locations are, this will probably be a very frenetic, quick run through. We'll just we'll just fly through it, right? Probably in about 10 minutes. But as you're learning it, this is a very progressive encounter where you have to learn where the spawn points are, learn where the glyph keepers are, learn where the blights are, right? You need to be able to do all of that and doing that requires reps. So that's the one thing I would say with this encounter. This is going to trip a lot of teams up, especially teams who are tired from working through the other different encounters. So just be patient with your fire team. Once people get a few weeks of reps in and they understand where everything spawns, this will be a very simple and quick encounter 
that will get you up to the boss. So that's the video, guys. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, check my Discord, and I'll see you, Guardians in the Tower.